adult cartoons, and more specifically adult sitcom slash comedy style cartoons, are so absurdly overdone at this point that it's starting to look like a bit of an incestual bloodline. They're not straying too far off the beaten path, like a human centipede top deal if you get what I'm saying. If you're catching my drift, you know the whole regurgitation through the butthole type of thing. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Before I strip nude in front of you and dive into this topic though, I wanted to get one thing out of the way and say I have no problem with the doll animation as a whole. Look at me, I'm innocent. I got my hands up. I'm not like on a crusade. I don't have a vengeance against these adult animations because they screwed my mother or anything. I, I like shows like Family Guy, The Simpsons, South Park. I would even go as far to say as I enjoy my time watching those shows because I do. Just think of me as another basic white girl in a Starbucks ordering a Frappuccino and the cashier getting my order wrong are those awful shows that we're going to be discussing today. It makes sense in your head if you think about it. Also, to prove I have a bit more depth than a basic white girl, I do enjoy some newer adult animation shows like Rick and Morty, Bojack Horseman, and Solar Opposites. They're all very solid. But first up, we gotta get these bad shows on the chopping block. They've been bad, bad boys, and it's time for their spanking. So naturally, upon thinking about awful adult animation shows, <laughs> the, the first show that immediately popped into my head, Big Mouth. God, I hate Big Mouth. <laughs> Big Mouth is the show that is so absurdly adult it can't be seen as funny unless there's multiple penises and vaginas with corresponding jokes in each episode. It, 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 it's ridiculous. How I see Big Mouth justifying their existence is that they're the show to take on adultish issues but in a very middle school humor, draw a penis on the wall top away because that's exactly what they do. I believe that the characters in the show are in middle school or high school, one of the two. They got hormone monsters, which is a big part of the show, and the intro music is I'm going through changes. It's very ironic that they have I'm going through changes as like the catchy jingle to the show and yet I haven't seen a change in their comedic routine of setting up jokes and executing jokes throughout the entire two to three seasons I watched. Case in point, once again referring back to the phallic objects, the ridiculous amount of phallic objects that are in this show, but hey, you can't blame them. It's what the show runs on. It's the ketamine that they take every day to keep on going. And that's just, that's what did it for me. The repetitiveness of it. The, how many seasons? They're going on like the fourth season maybe? They're on their fourth or they're going into their fourth, which... It's dragged on for too long. There's, I feel like there's only so long you can carry on a show about puberty. But, you know, the first season was alright, but after that I kind of lost interest. It tries to explore topics like puberty and sexuality. You can debate if it did it successfully or not, but I just can't get past the fact they have a character who bangs a girl pillow named Pam, who then leaves him so he has sex with a bath mat. <laughs> Then gets together with a girl pillow named Suzette, which leads to Brad the boy couch pillow joining in on the fun, creating this polyamorous relationship of one guy and two pillows. <laughs> and they all have faces, by the way, from the pictures you've seen. You'll find out that's very annoying very quickly, though. And if that wasn't enough evidence to convince you that this show sucks through a glory hole, it shows underage cartoon vagina with a face on it and it has its own personality because everything in this stupid show has to have its own face and personality we're your curly new pals are we in tampa because it's hot and stinky and i don't want to be here no we're not in tampa we're in crotch city usa hi guys there's plenty more i could talk about but i want to keep this video real short and sweet so let's move on to the next atrocious animation now I'm here to tear Paradise PD a new one. That's a foreshadowing joke, you'll, it'll pay off in a minute. First off, they brought Tom Kenny in as the sheriff's voice, and knowing that the man who played my absolute favorite childhood cartoon character, Spongebob, is now voicing a sheriff who got his nuts shot off by his son while he was having intercourse with his wife, kinda ruins everything. Now it's time for that foreshadowing joke I promised you to pay off. The police department's badge? It's a butthole, get it? Tear you a new one? The badge is a butthole. <laughs> I'd be slapping my knee, but you can't see it. I have copious amounts of things that I could say about this show. Get down into the nitty gritty, get real scientific about how it sucks, but I'm just gonna do a broad stroke over it and save some time. It, it uses shock humor very poorly. You know that episode of Family Guy where they all start throwing up on each other? It's like that, but almost every episode, almost half of every episode is that kind of humor with vomit or blood. It, it gets, it's overused insanely quickly. Have you seen this asshole? Oh, no! How about you? You seen this asshole? 
And even when they do try to branch off and do a funny joke, set up and execute that joke without shock humor, it doesn't land and it's still insanely unfunny. There's a more in-depth and way better video by Jay Exy that goes more into why the show sucks and you know how they execute the shock humor and whatnot and he doesn't sound like a hillbilly so go watch that if you want to see more about Paradise PD but uh don't watch the show please I don't watch the show. Now it's time for Hoops' prostate exam and the doc says it ain't looking too good. To keep on the topic of a prostate exam, hoops is very much like one. Nobody enjoys it, no one looks forward to it, and they don't like a finger up in their anus wiggling around. And that's exactly what it feels like when you watch hoops. I could only bear to somewhat watch the first episode, and then I tried to watch a couple more in two times speed, but <laughs> that only made getting through the jokes even more unbearable because I had no break in between them. It was just like bad fart hitting me in the face after a bad fart hitting me in the face. I was getting... A good inhale, and it was never stopping. That smell just kept on coming. I, I think they pooped in their pants. I think they soiled their garments. I don't even have to tell you this show has no originality to it at all. Just look at the animation style. Come on now. You know what show they stole that animation style from. I'm not even going to say it. Also look at the TV show preview cover of this and tell me you think it'll be a good animation sitcom. Because you can't. You'd be sucked straight down the hell. That's all I'm going to be talking about for this show, though. There's really no occasion you could turn this on. It's not even good to have his background noise. It's just kind of like, why even give it your time? It's like a eh out of 10, you know, like just eh, why? But once again, there's a great video by Full Fat Videos that I watched of him talking about how truly bad the show is. He goes more into depth, just like the guy that did the Paradise PD video. And once again, that link will be in the description. My pediatrician says I need to go on a diet because I have the risk factors for diabetes. First of all, you shouldn't see a pediatrician anymore. You should see a real doctor. You got pubes and titties. Second of all, you're a fat fuck. Eat less sugar. Thank you, sir. Now I'll stop being a loser magoozer and go into depth a little bit about a new show that I really did enjoy, and that's Solar Opposites. This show has a common creator with Rick and Morty, that being Justin Roiland, and I'm gonna start off hot here and say, I think this show sets up jokes and executes those jokes better than Rick and Morty. I think it may overall be a better show than Rick and Morty. I know, blasphemy! Hey, hey, no, no! Don't shoot, don't shoot! Not to stroke off Justin Roiland or anything, but it seems like everything he pushes out of that vagina of his is just pure gold. But if you enjoy Rick and Morty, that rhymes, that could be a bar in a rap song, a cool hip rap song, you know, D stack the rapper, baby. If you enjoy Rick and Morty, though, go watch Solar Opposites. You know, it's got the same voice actor, creator. So, you know, it's got to be at least decent compared to Rick and Morty. My name's Corvo. This is, this is my show. I just dropped the pupa. Do you see me? This is ridiculous. I hate Earth. It's a horrible home. People are stupid. Everyone claims to like old people, but they're not fucking them. I fuck old people all the time. They love me. And another recommendation, I'm going to slap this with a gold star of approval. The Midnight Gospel, while it's not a sitcom comedy animation in the traditional sense, it's more along the lines of a animated podcast. And I'm a big fan of podcasts, so this was right up my alley. I fell in love with the animation style and how beautiful it was, and I enjoyed truly every second of it. I can't say that too often. I really enjoyed every second of the season. There's only one season out. I enjoyed every second of that season that I watched. I felt like I was high when I watched this show, like I was smoking with Snoop Dogg up on Cloud 9 because there was so much insanity unfolding on the screen. It was it was such fun to watch. You know, I can only imagine what it was like actually watching the show high. I'm sure that's a truly, <laughs> truly one-of-a-kind experience in and of itself. I would... Wouldn't mind to try that out one day. It definitely has its moments though. It'll hit you in every emotion, but overall, if you're looking for a good thing to relax to and just enjoy something for the art that it is, I highly recommend The Midnight Gospel. I would give it a 9.8 out of 10. This is hopeless. Yes. The moment you accept things as they are, you don't need to hope anymore because you realize that where you are is kind of okay. And since I gave the Midnight Gospel a rating, it gave me an idea to go back and rate all the other ones. I would give Big Mouth a 2 out of 10 since it had a little bit going for it in the first season. And then Paradise PD, I would give that a 1 out of 10. I would give it a very... Maybe if 0 out of 10 was an option, I'd probably pick that. But we'll give it at least a star for being put together. And then Hoops, I would give Hoops 1.5. It, it wasn't as, as unbearable as Paradise PD. It wasn't as vulgar or anything. So I'd give it a 1.5. It's just not fun. And then for Solar Opposites, I'd give Solar Opposites a solid 9. I would give Solar Opposites a very solid 9. It's not, a, it's not as good as Midnight Gospel to me. I just really was into that style. If you like the style of podcast animated, 
right up your alley once again it go straight into your g-spot baby it'll feel amazing so that's it for this video i just wanted to go over and talk about some new adult animations that have came out just why adult animations as a whole have been sucking big fat eggs these past few years like nothing really good has came out except for a few of these exceptions that i've talked about here really how i see it is just these tv studios are wanting to pump out these adult animations because it's the big new trend and the big wave with rick and morty and whatever so they're just spewing their diarrhea at the wall they're aiming it at the wall instead of the toilet and seeing if they can get something to stick and the majority of them cannot because they just they do it so badly and that's i wanted to give the spotlight to some really awful ones some truly despicable adult animations as well as give some praise to some ones that deserve it and that'll do it for me i'm retiring to my chambers and i'll see you next time peace out oh oh I'm, i need an eye patch